Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It. Today I'm going to be talking about Marlin firmware. We're going to talk about a checklist for success as well as debunk myths on why to update your firmware. Let's go. So you guys have followed us for a bit and if you haven't, hey, hit that subscribe button, like the video and share it around. But we love talking firmware. We love talking nerd. We love talking program. So what is firmware? Well, we've talked about it a little bit before, but firmware is the language that lets a computer controller talk to the other components. Software is what interfaces between the human and the computer device or firmware. So firmware needs to be upgraded in a few situations. Now, when it comes to our 3D printer, what are those situations? So unlike firmware on your computer, or even let's say on your home security alarm, or in your car, 3D printer firmware is a little bit different. You don't have to run out as soon as the next release of the firmware comes out and patch your printer because there's a security threat. Something's going to happen with that firmware that lets people in your house through your Ecobee thermostat, for example. That's not the case with a 3D printer. Think of 3D printer firmware as more of the engine of your car. You wouldn't run out every time a new car came out and demand the retailer change your engine. That's just silly. So why would we consider changing the firmware on our printer? The simple answer is something's changed. So we're missing a feature, we want to add a feature. Maybe we changed our controller and now we have to rebuild new firmware. Maybe we have an older printer. In the past, we know that the original Creality machines or even some of the Tronxy machines had firmware that didn't have thermal runaway protection on it. And that's a really simple thing to add in Marlin. And so we would take to Arduino Studio back in the day. And now we take to VS Code and we, in a hurry, update those features to get those new safety features enabled, or maybe S-curve acceleration or junction deviation. As firmware grows, new features get added. But sometimes the firmware upgrade really just adds bug fixes. And if you're not experiencing the issues that are addressed in the new release, you really don't have to upgrade your pr printer firmware. Now I know you're screaming at the screen saying, David, you update your firmware all the time. I really don't. I will do an update when I do one of my machines. I will take care and do all of them at once. So for example, my whole fleet here now is on 2.0.7.2. And I probably will skip 2.8 when it comes out, or if we make a video, I might do it. But the reason that I upgraded my firmware was this Christmas time period. I got some really good deals on some ABL sensors, and I showed them off in the other video. So one was the inductive sensor, one was a BL touch. And I had to upgrade two printer firmwares to do those specific functions. And while I was in the firmware, I have two under three, so I might as well change one from inductive to BL touch and upload new firmware. So that's really the difference. And that's why I did it. I changed a component. So when we're adding components and changing, that's the other reason. So features and components. So now we have our two reasons why we would really need to change firmware. So how do we change our firmware successfully? Well, I built a checklist, I've tweaked it a bit, I wanna share it with you so that you can get an idea of exactly what knowledge you will need to successfully make new firmware. Now remember, we do have a video from before, which I will link in a card up top here, that goes through step by step how to install all the components and use VS Code, particularly with Platform IO. And remember, you can use these for our old 8-bit controllers or the 32-bit controllers. So really, that video is great all around for everything. But in this video, let's talk checklist. So as far as a checklist goes for what you need to know before you jump into Marlin, it's fairly straightforward. First off, let's say you're recompiling firmware for your Ender 3 printer. Well, do you have the original controller? Did you buy a Baytree Tech E3 1.2? Do 
Do you have a 1.4 turbo, a 1.3 SKR? These are different kinds of boards and you will need to know your board type so that you can label it in config.h as well as the processor model so you can use the correct build environment in platform IO. The next thing you have to think about is the speed of communication of your controller via the USB serial port. So most control boards set their baud rate to about 115,200. That's a standard setting inside the firmware. So if you're thinking about using, say, a TFT screen from Big Tree Tech or adding different components, if you actually increase that number, it can cause collision and make issues in your printer firmware. So if you keep it around that default level, your printer will still be able to communicate. The serial port will be fast enough to send job information. So if you're using Octoprint or Printerface to send your print jobs, it's going to do just fine. The only thing you might notice is large file transfers over the USB may slow down, but that's really it. There's no downside really to 115200. I use it all the time on most of my printers and I haven't run into a slow issue. So the next thing is the serial connections. Now, if you're in Marlin and we look at the specific section here, it's the serial port section. Usually serial port one is set to zero. So it says serial port and zero. And then we have a serial port two. Now on some boards, this is commented out on the big tree tech 32 bit board. So think your SKR boards or even your Ender E3 minis. Those ones actually have two serial ports. So in that case, you're going to be looking at setting port one to zero and port two to negative one. Now all of this stuff is readily available on your board's manufacturer website. So if you jump over, for example, to Big Tree Tech's SKR 1.3 board, you can see their default config and pull out the port information right from their example config. So the next thing is cosmetic things. Cosmetic things about the printer. What do you want to name the printer? What do you want the author name to be in your config? Very, very superficial. They actually have no bearing on your overall config, but it's good to know that you can change the name if you want. Uh, for example, my Ender 3 sitting to the right of me is named Doc and one is named Sleepy just because I thought it was hilarious. So you can change the names there. The next things aren't so cosmetic, but they are physical and you need to know them. The build volume is one. You're going to need to set the build size of your printer. So again, an example of that would be on uh, Ender 3 Pro, you're going to use 235 for the X, 235 for the Y, and 250 for the Z. Obviously that changes for printer, so you need to know your specific case. And then uh, your acceleration of the printer. So is it that Ender 3 format? Are we going to use the default settings? Now remember, if you are upgrading your firmware, you can get most of this by issuing M503 and reading the output from the terminal from the old firmware. So on an Ender 3 or those i3 clone kind of printers, your acceleration is going to be relatively slower, so in the 500 range for most axes, versus a Core XY or a Delta where you're talking in the thousands. It's not uncommon to see a Delta printer in the th 3000 level for acceleration. Again, issuing M503 will get this information from your old printer, generally speaking, into your new printer. Remember, if you're running into issues, there are a ton of example configurations available, and we'll put a link on how to get them in the description. But remember, they are a separate download now in the new version of Marlin. The next is jerk or junction deviation. You're going to want to know your jerk settings. So again, on an Ender 3 or Creality or Prusa kind of i3 style printer, your jerk settings are going to be between 25 and 5. You, you will know your settings probably if you're upgrading because you have them, again, M503. If you don't know them, start with the example, and what I listed is the example, uh, jerk or acceleration settings, and you should be good to go. You also need to decide, are you going to use classic jerk 
or junction deviation. Now junction deviation provides smoother corners, but you really need a 32-bit processor to do it, and not all 32-bit processors are built equally. So if you own, say, a Big Tree Tech E3 1.2, or even the SKR, the big boys, those boards can handle it just fine, but the Creality ones suffer an issue where you can't actually use junction deviation. Now, at the time of releasing this video, I haven't fully researched the 4.27 board for Creality. So if you guys know if you can use junction deviation on that, uh, throw it in the comments, that'd be great. But I will investigate that board so I have an answer to that. Next is, you're going to want to decide if you're going to use things like linear advance to sync your stepper, uh, extruder stepper to the motion system. It works great, you get good linear extrusion, but remember these all need tuning. So once you have those settings kind of in your mind and you've used M503 to get most of them, then we can talk about stepper drivers. Now, you just need to know what model of stepper driver you're using and whether it is in UR or standalone mode. So fairly simple, if you have a TMC driver and for example, let's say a 2208, if that 2208 stepper driver has been put in UART mode, either from the factory or you've soldered the pads together on that board, you can use that stepper in UART configuration, which in Marlin translates to you using the driver TMC2208. And that will put that stepper into your board and give you all the UART functions you need. Now that's not to say we're done, but that's part of the checklist. So get your drivers in mind and get ready to enter them on the board. Remember that when you want to use two Z steppers, for example, you are just going to uncomment the second Z driver in configure H right here, and that will get you the two Z drivers, and the second one will be on the E1 port if you have enough stepper ports. One last thing to note is that if you are running a stock configuration and moving to a non-stock configuration, so let's say you have the Creality 1.14 board still in your Ender 3 Pro, you are going to need to make sure that your stepper driver direction is inverted if you are putting in a new board that has Trinamic TMC 2208s, 2209s, because the motion of the system is different. And if you don't invert the stepper direction, your gantry and your bed are gonna move opposite and not home correctly. You're gonna get loud, and then you're gonna to wanna to throw the printer away. So just make sure that you get your stepper motion right in there. Now, honorable mentions for configuration.h include mesh bed leveling or auto bed leveling. It's in this section that you need to decide whether you are going to use a BL Touch probe or you are going to use mesh bed leveling or none of the above and just leave all the bed leveling methods commented out. But you need to decide here and then you can go on and configure the advanced settings uh, and follow our other video, which I will link in a card here, uh, to get configured for a BL Touch or mesh bed leveling. So that finishes the section for configuration.h. Now, once you get that all set up and you have your board type in, we're ready to go to the advanced configuration. Now, for me, that means a few different things on my checklist. The first thing that I throw on there is auto fans. I love them. I went through them in a previous video. If you want to check that out, again, it'll be linked in the description and available through the card. Now, the auto fans turn on and off when one of the controllable heating systems gets above a temperature. So you need a thermistor attached to something that gets hot so that you can then trigger the auto fan. Another cool use for auto fans is the controller board fan in configuration.h. Now this is a controllable feature that when the steppers are in motion, the fan will turn on, but if the steppers are off, the fan turns off. It's Useful, but not as nice as, say, using a thermistor inside the controller board in enclosure and then using that to turn on as a chamber fan if you have an available port to do it. The next thing in configuration advanced.h is your TMC settings. You want to make sure that TMC debug is on. If you have a 32-bit controller with an LPC 1768 
or 1769, or something with the STM controllers that have the 512 variant, you can enable all these features without worrying about overstepping your EEPROM uh, uh, memory storage. So those are really easy to turn on and you can get more information out of your system then by using these. The other thing that you configure in configuration advanced.h for your Trinamics is the stepper voltage, the VREF. Now, when you're configuring this, look for the section that says has Trinamic config. It'll pop you down. You can check your current settings. For an Ender 3, the defaults are around 600. The bigger you go, the heavier your build plate the higher those VREFs are. And a good rule of thumb is if your stepper drivers are getting hot or your motors are getting hot while you're printing, you have the voltage too high. If you're missing steps and noticing stuttering, your voltage is too low. So a good place to start for me has always been around that 600 mark. And on all of my printers, my Ender, my CR10S, everything has been close. Obviously the CR10S goes up to about 800 for, for the bed and the bigger we get, the higher the current. So that's one thing you will configure and one of the last things in our checklist. The next thing is also Trinamic based and you want to make sure that the hybrid threshold is disabled so that you don't switch from spread cycle to stealth chop and back and forth. You always want to make sure that stealth chop is enabled and you're not switching back to spread cycle. Spread cycle is good if you need higher torque but it is the louder of the two and it will drive you batty if you are in the same room. But if you need higher torque, higher speeds, spread cycle can deliver those. The last thing to look for in configuration advanced H is the advanced pause function. Even if you do not have a filament runout sensor to define, advanced pause is great for you to use because you can issue M600 or pause from the printer and then you get the automatic park motion. You can change the filament, hit go, it extrudes and changes and away you go. If you want to see the M600 video we did, the link will be right here. So, is it a component? Is it a feature? Are you missing either? Then upgrade your firmware. If you're not, your firmware is probably fine as it is. So, here's the Marlin checklist. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's what we use when we recompile and compile firmware that we show our examples of. And now you have it as a tool. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. Remember, like, subscribe, share this video. And until next time, take care, have a good one.